orchestral sketch number four. One that I'm not particularly proud of, but that's okay. Doing these sketches are an exercise in getting a better understanding of composing, orchestration, and why certain things work and other things don't. Hi there, this is David, also known as Ghost Rider. This sketch is mostly done from out a theoretical perspective. That means that I didn't sit down behind the piano to sketch out a melody. I also didn't have a clear upfront idea where I wanted to go with this melody line, this cantus firmus. So I followed only some theoretical basic steps to develop the cantus firmus to a fully orchestrated version. To get a better understanding of what I am talking about, let's listen to both first. To be honest, I did these theoretical steps on purpose, and I can hear you think, why? Well, I don't have access to a piano all day, for example, when I'm traveling, but I do have access to my iPad with Stealthpad. So I can write these sketches whenever I want, where I want, and that is maximum flexibility, and that is great. All right, enough said. Let's continue to staff pad, to the Cantus Firmus and all the steps that I took to get a fully orchestrated version. I tried to write a very, very simple Cantus Firmus to make it easy for me to start, but also to challenge myself because I need to develop this simple and not very exciting line into something that connects to me and other listeners. As always, there is a pattern to this govern in this Cantus Firmus. You probably already noticed it. It's going one step up, one step down, and it repeats. Then I mirrored the first bar. It's going one step down, one step up, and it repeats. The third bar is a mixture of the same notes with an ending on the A in the final fourth bar. Let's listen to it one more time. The first development step is all about intervals, motion and counterpoint. Doing first species, second species, third species and fourth species counterpoint. All impressive terms, but let me put it simple. First species counterpoint is one to one, meaning you write one note in your counterpoint melody for one note in your cantus firmus. Second species counterpoint means you write two notes in your counterpoint melody for one note in your cantus firmus. Third species counterpoint, I guess you already understand. You write three notes in your counterpoint melody for one note in your cantus firmus. And four species counterpoint, yeah, you already figured that one out. I know that for sure. Same approach as the last orchestral sketches when looking at intervals. I aim for thirds, sixths and tenths and above. You will see me pointing them out right now. These are imperfect consonances. These intervals gives us a rich harmonic sound. Does that mean you can't use other intervals like fifths and octaves? No, definitely not, but be aware when you use them and why, because fifths tend to sound louder and octaves mostly feel like only one note is being played. Let's have a look at the motion I ended up with. I already discussed the cantus firmus, so let me draw in the lines how this moves. Nothing really special, just as I mentioned before. 
When we look at the counterpoint melody, something becomes clear. It moves mostly in the opposite direction of the cantus firmus. And that is something to keep in mind when you write music. Enough diversity in your motion makes your music interesting to listen to. But don't exaggerate, otherwise you will lose your audience and people will disconnect from your music. Let's do a quick listening and then continue with the next step. If you follow me along for quite some time, you probably know that I started to play the drums as a little kid. Not doing much with it nowadays though, I have to admit, my drums are stored on the attic for years now, making my neighbors very happy. But rhythm in music is really important. It connects, it can be a comfortable hold on for your listeners, it makes us want to dance. So in this sketch, I wanted to do something with rhythm but still in a very simple and basic way. So I added 16 pedal notes on the low A and some offbeat notes. At this point, I didn't thought about orchestration yet. I just added these parts knowing I would figure it out when I needed to. Let's do a quick listening. When I asked my son what he thought about this sketch, he was dead honest with me. He said, I don't like it, it's awful. One of the reasons why he said this was the decoration parts I added. These were extremely loud and overshouting the rest, so I lowered them a bit in this example. Did I need these decoration parts? I guess not, but I love string and woodwind runs, the fast celeste and marimba parts or the harp in the background. So I had that in mind. Let's do a last listening and continue with a look at the orchestrated version next. The cantus firmus is played by the celeste and the basses. The last one played an octave lower in pizzicato style. The celeste also plays the counterpoint melody. So I guess I gave this instrument the main part in this sketch. I truly love the sound of the celeste and I use it very often in my compositions. The rhythm, the fast repeating pedal notes, is done by the triangle. And the offbeat notes are taken care of by the rototoms, supported by the xylophone to which I added some extra notes. The tubular bells address the first note of the bar. They play a constant note, which is an A. The marimba plays the runs, subtle, but it is noticeable. And that all sounds just like this. I hope you enjoyed this orchestral sketch and if you did, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already. Ding that bell if you want to be notified when I upload a new orchestral sketch or a video about orchestration and how to create realistic orchestral mockups within your DAW. I hope to see you next week with another video.